Hi, my name is Jeff Burke. I'm a professor in the theater department and one of the faculty directors of UCLA REMAP, a joint center of the School of Theater, Film and Television and the Samuel E. School of Engineering. I'm gonna talk very briefly about research and live experiences in extended reality, starting with an AR and immersive theater project called The Most Favored Nation. This is a still in progress uh, student faculty and staff uh, effort to create an immersive theater experience that incorporates uh, augmented reality to tell an original story within the world of the streaming series, The Man in the High Castle. It involves a large number of students, faculty, and staff. And what you're seeing here is a sample mobile AR view from the stage of one of our theaters that shows an overlay of AR content from one timeline in the story in which the Allied powers have won World War II uh, on top of a physical set uh, that tells a, a sort of different story uh, of a timeline in which the Axis powers have won uh, World War II. And so you can see a bit of that physical set off to the side here as we turn around. In the streaming series, it's a set of newsreels. In our piece, it's a device that allows the audience members and the characters to explore a timeline in which the other side uh, won. We don't have time to go into the storylines that the students have created in 1960s Chicago, really these two Chicagos um, that the audience can follow. But I wanna highlight a sort of technical aspect of the approach that's been uh, really fascinating for us. On the left, you're gonna see in this video an example of a mobile AR view. Uh, on the upper right, a view of the person who's walking around the physical set uh, to see that view. And then in the bottom right, a uh, operator view actually across the Atlantic uh, with one of our collaborators who is looking at a VR view of all of the elements in AR plus what the audience member is seeing uh, more or less in real time. And it's this idea that we are creating stories within a multi-user simulation that can provide different perspectives to different people, uh, whether they're audience members or operators, that's become really fascinating for us. I'll run just a little bit of this. A lot of our testing has been sort of this onstage portion, so that's why what we're talking about sounds like an immersive theater production. And then as we go into what we're doing in the next fall, it's sort of now thinking about how we deliver it. It's super cool. That's great, too. Uh, Derica, you want to take the video? Yeah, go ahead. Mira, do you want to explain a little sure. bit about what we're doing? So, we were really fortunate to work with all of our actors um, by sending them green screens. And since it's kind of a big ball cap, we did two-sided green screen planes. So, um, Jeff, if you can go to Peter and show sort of how have it so it's like rotating and obviously it's clear at some points that it's a, a, a 2d plane but it actually simulates sort of this idea of oh wow the space pretty well and so you see we have the flat moment but then now it feels again back towards the cool. yeah. so in the middle of developing that show the pandemic hit and we didn't know when there would be an opportunity to perform in the same place again and so we started to explore in parallel how some of those same technologies that are being used to create a mobile AR experience could be used to create a fully virtual performance environment uh, with a shared space for actors who were spread out across the country and in some cases across the world. And so that experimentation was looking at how a game engine, you know, kind of a key component of extended reality thinking could be combined with video conferencing technology to pull remote actors into a shared virtual environment that was also um, creative and engaging visually and provided a, a fantastic opportunity for our designers to learn a new medium that they were working in. And so this was a, a production of The Last Days of Judas Iscariot with actors that were performing on their own in a remote space and composited in real time into this 3D environment uh, set in motion by the designers. This research involves a number of different simultaneous threads from creating stories and ways of telling stories that exercise extended reality ideas in a certain way to the collaborative processes and workflows that make it possible to do them live to the software components that need to be designed and built to make those things possible. And one of the exciting kind of cross-cutting ideas 
is the notion of working uh, in a real time and iterative way that's enabled by XR technologies and, and in particular game engines. Um, and a move from the old model of content production on the left to a more iterative real time model suggested on the right, where we can put people into the experience that they're creating as it's under development and see holistically how it may work when multiple people are interacting in a shared environment that's being created uh, around a single goal. So one of the exciting directions uh, that's happening next for us is to take some of those real-time ideas, some of the extended reality experience from the pandemic and start to re-enter the physical world in our thinking and explore hybrid experiences that use technologies like LED walls to uh, bring XR experiences that we've been doing remotely um, on stage and into physical environments. And in particular, we're working on a pilot with the Anderson School of Management around immersive learning experiences that involve uh, both in-person and remote students using some of these technologies. So I'd be happy to talk more about these ideas or answer questions by email. Thanks very much.